All right, team, so we are back, of course, to talk about some Final Fantasy VII Remake. And today we have a bit of a different video. So one of my favorite aspects of Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting to see all those nostalgic things from the original game, everything that's just ingrained in our memories, being modernized with the graphics that we have now. And this is pretty much everything. We're talking music, locations, enemies, character models, all the way up to the CG cutscenes, which, of course, is the focus of today's video. A couple things before we get into this. For one, when it comes to the Midgar segment of the original Final Fantasy VII, there's not a whole lot of CG cutscenes, at least when I watch back through it, not as many as I thought. And I believe every CG cutscene that plays in the original game was also in Remake Part 1. So with that, we can kind of assume that just about every other CG cutscene that's in the rest of FF7 is potentially going to be in Remake. And I say potentially because the devs say that going forward will be the same Final Fantasy VII story that we know, but also at the end of Remake Part 1 they say the unknown journey will continue, on top of that, with the final chapter, chapter 18, it's hard to believe that the story is going to be the exact same going forward. There's got to be some new shit, obviously. Also, when it comes to this video, I kind of want to set myself a bit of a limit, because even though there's some fantastic cutscenes all throughout the original Final Fantasy VII, we're not getting the rest of the story realistically with the next game. And even if we did get the rest of the story with the next game, then that would mean they have to cut back on a lot of locations and other stuff, right? Like, they'd have to, to be able to squeeze everything else into the next game just seems like an impossibility. Now, me personally, here on the channel, I talk a lot about how I feel like Part 2 could go up to Nibelheim. And we've done the math before on a different video. And I believe there's pretty close to, like, 18 locations from Calm to Nibelheim. Which, of course, in Remake Part 1, there's 18 chapters. Each location gets its own chapter. That seems to make sense to me. But there are a good amount of people out there that believe that the game could go all the way up to... Without doing spoilers yet in the video, we'll say the end of Disc 1. If you've played Final Fantasy VII, you know what that means. I guess another non-spoiler way of saying it, you could say the Forgotten Capital, City of the Ancients, whatever. Ultimately, there's really no way of knowing, because we don't know how much they're going to expand each location versus how they turned Midgar, the, or the entire Midgar segment, into one full game. One 20-30 hour game, 18 chapters. Who knows? Like, Junon itself could be one or two or three chapters, depending right how big that city is. Who knows? So I think setting ourselves a limit of the end of Disc 1 is pretty reasonable. That gives us a handful of more locations past Nibelheim, which I don't think they're going to go beyond the end of Disc 1, because then you're tacking on so much more to the game and i just don't see them squeezing that into the next game so with that out of the way let's hop right into it first and foremost the first thing we're going to be doing in part two almost immediately potentially is the calm flashback and with that comes a couple of cg scenes this of course is going to be a hell of an opening for a video game i can't wait to see this shit but if we're going in order of like the cg cutscenes that happen whenever you're doing the calm flashback we first get the reveal of mountain of bell that's gonna be pretty interesting that place looks so cool even for playstation one can't wait to see with modern graphics ps5 graphics to be exact and then, of course, after that, we have the reveal of the Machinoid. And I kind of touched on this with our video we did for Halloween, the scary moments from Final Fantasy VII, but the Machinoid has always stuck with me for some reason. I think it's because this is the only time we see it throughout the entirety of Final Fantasy VII. We also get to see it, of course, in Crisis Core. But we don't ever see these things again. We don't ever get to fight these through the original Final Fantasy VII. I just always remembered this segment. I'm really curious to see what they look like with Remake. And I'm kind of thinking that this time we're going to fight them. I know we have the unknown entity in Remake that is supposed to be maybe these, but I hope we fight this thing. And the next CG cutscene that we should be getting according to the original FF7 is the iconic Sephiroth walking through fire scene. We don't need to spend a lot of time on this. It's just an, one of the most iconic scenes from the original FF7, so can't wait to see it. Now the other CG scene past this is the Genova reveal scene, but the thing is we've already seen Genova when it comes to remake. I'm still looking forward to this segment if they're going to show it, if it's going to, I'm assuming, play out the exact same way. But we've already got to see a good look at Genova and even fight Genova with remake part one, so this isn't as hype as it normally would be. Kind of a small quick one, but the reveal of the High Wind. this is obviously going to be our vehicle eventually when it comes to the remake story, how we're going to traverse the world and getting to see what it looks like in modern graphics and the actual modern scale of it, what it looks like, you know, realistically. It's be pretty cool. Next up, we're going to kind of group two together, though they happen at different moments in the game, and the first one is the reveal of the Gold Saucer. I've always loved this location, the way it looks, and I'm very curious, for one, how big it's meant to actually be. What is the scale of this thing? Is this supposed to be thousands and thousands and thousands of feet tall, or, you know, what? How many people fit in this thing? How many, like, tourists are here having fun and playing and shit? I don't know. I want to know the realistic size of this location. I want the reveal of this thing to just be absolutely amazing. I want to be blown away by the sheer size of it. I hope that in earlier locations before we get here... We get the Vegas hint of it, like just this weird like gold light in the distance on the horizon, over the hills, over the mountains, something like that. I, just, I want to be blown away by this thing's size. The next one, of course, would be the date scene that happens in the Gold Saucer. Now, there's a couple smaller cutscenes that happen here, CG cutscenes. Namely, the Chocobo running by the cart, which I've always been a fan of. I don't know why. This just gives us another look at Gold Saucer from a bunch of different angles. Looking forward to it. This one's pretty obvious, I think. I think most people are looking forward to it. But the whole Bugenhagen, Bugenhagen, however you say his name... 
the whole like observatory segment where he just talks about space and the planet and live stream and we get to see all this like outer space, our solar system within the game. Just, this whole segment is going to be potentially the coolest overall like cutscene maybe through all of the remake. Like it has potential for that. I can't wait to see this. Plus, just in general, outside of the CG cutscene that's probably going to play here, is Bugenhagen, Bugenhagen, I'm going to call him Bugenhagen, fuck it. Uh, like, his knowledge that he has, and given the new shit that's happened with Remake, this is probably going to be a very, very pivotal scene throughout the entire story of Remake. So I'm really looking forward to this. And since for this video we're going up to the end of Disc 1 with the original game, I think that's the last CG cutscene we're going to talk about for the video. Big spoiler, click away from the video if you've not played the original FF7. Go out and play it. It's on every goddamn platform. Play that shit, come back. It's, of course, the Aerith death scene. This has potential to be the most important cutscene overall when it comes to the remake story because we don't know yet if Aerith is going to die. There's a good chance she's going to survive this segment. She could die later. We've talked about that a lot on the channel. She could die at a different time. She might survive the entire remake story. We don't know yet. So this scene is going to be very, very important. But also, if it happens the way it's supposed to, it's going to be a very sad scene. And as much as I don't want to see it happen, I'm also kind of anticipating it. And I don't want to get into a long conversation about the potential of Eris' death in this video because we've done dedicated videos to it, but I'm just really curious how this scene's going to go. Because if you're already a classic Final Fantasy VII fan, you already know what happens here. And as sad as it's going to be, and it's still going to be very sad, we already know what's supposed to happen. So I, that's why I think things could be different. We've already seen teases of the scene when it comes to Remake Chapter 18 when we're defeating all the Whispers and get all the flashes of visions and stuff. We see them teasing this. So it seems to imply that it's going to happen, but also Red 13 says that what we're seeing is the future, it's tomorrow, if they fail here today, which of course we didn't fail. We defeated the Whisperers, so that would somewhat imply that maybe the visions we're getting aren't going to happen if we defeat the Whisper Harbinger, which of course we did. So I don't know. That's why it's all over the place. That's why it's an interesting discussion. Either way, this scene, oh, I want it, but I don't want it. There are so many other cool scenes and cinematics that I want to see when it comes to Remake. But we can't talk about them all here, right? We can't like we can't talk about the failed lo rocket launch in Rocket Town. I want to see it, goddamn right, I want to see it. But it's not that big of a deal. But and, and there's future ones. We might do another video sometime talking about some other cinematics. I also want to do a video maybe about cutscenes. You know, cutscene is different from a CG cutscene. It's just where there's dialogue between characters and stuff like that. Obviously, Dine's gonna be number one on that video on that list. Of course, we might do a video about that at some point. I don't know. But of course, my dudes, that is pretty much the video I want to pass off to you guys. Now, in the comment section, it doesn't got to be limited to just the end of disc one. Just what are some cinematics that you're looking forward to when it comes to the remake project? Going forward, another, another one that's going to be in the future. Pretty much anything in North Crater. Mostly the weapons coming out of the planet. I want to see that shit. I've always wanted to see the weapons high definition. We got a good look at Diamond Weapon with, like, Kingsglaive and, like, Final Fantasy 15. I almost said 14 for some reason. Like, that shit was badass. I want to see that in remake. I've been my dudes, that is the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Once did more Final Fantasy VII Remake content, turn all my notifications, follow me on Twitter, Dash YT, and my Discord. The links to the Stumpbox card in the description. End of the outro. Later, guys. Used to care what people thought, but now I care more. I and mean, nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like Coltrane, we in here. Like Rogaine, or leave it. Like Cobain.